Did you know that this is the first generation which is on track to be a non-Christian majority? It's really obvious taking a look at some statistics or really just stepping into any church that we need a new way to reach this generation. This is why I've created this Power Evangelism Masterclass for you. I hope you enjoy it. It goes through all the details when it comes to utilizing and accessing the power of the Holy Spirit in order to reach unbelievers. If this is your first time on this channel, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and you will stay up to date with all of our new content. Enjoy the this masterclass. It is a little longer than most of my videos, but there's just so much packed into here. So I suggest that you just watch it from start to finish and really dig into what the Bible says about reaching the lost through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hey everybody, welcome to this training. Uh, really excited to get started with you here. Now, what you're going to be learning about today, um, you can apply immediately. So let's go ahead and dive on in here to our Power Evangelism Masterclass. Um, I'm going to be walking you through four key elements to increase your understanding and ability to operate in signs and wonders for the purpose of bringing your family, your friends, your neighbors, co-workers, etc., whoever, into a closer relationship with Jesus. Um, so what are we going to learn today? We have the benefits, shortcomings, and dangers of traditional evangelism. We're going to talk about reaching the lost like Jesus and the early apostles. Um, it's my personal goal to be somebody who completely lives a life dedicated to the Lord, and I want to follow Jesus in everything, and so we're going to talk a lot about that. Uh, a crash course in operating in signs and wonders, there's no way that I could potentially uh, cover all that that needs to be covered with that in a short class like this, but we will kind of touch base a little bit into that. And then uh, finally, how to reach millennials and the future generation. Um, the statistics are quite staggering on how many uh, millennials and, and generations beyond that are not attending church, uh, are not professing to be Christians. And so we're going to get into what it's going to take to reach that generation. All right, so why is it important? Uh, like I said, modeling the life of Christ should be our aim. He is our primary example. So the way that Jesus evangelized and reached people should be the same way that we want to evangelize and reach people. You know, WWJD, what would Jesus do? It's not just a cute saying. Uh, I think it needs to be our lifestyle. Um, confronting natural limitations with supernatural solutions. If all we're doing as Christians is trying to uh, confront our natural limitations with natural solutions, then we are missing out on a key element of the power of God and what he wants to provide and how he wants to use us uh, really to change the world. The crisis of our post-Christian society. Um, this is an important topic that we're going to just touch base on. Like I said, there's a lot of statistics, but we are truly entering into a post-Christian society. Now, I do believe uh, that the Lord is going to break in and that we are going to see revival in our nation and the world before it's all said and done. Uh, but right now, it's uh, there's some, some meek and dire straits uh, that we are in as a society. And then finally, we need to fulfill our potential and destiny as the church. And so I'm going to be talking a little bit about how power evangelism and operating in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit to reach believers is actually one of the ways that we will fulfill that potential and destiny. All right, so what's different about this masterclass and really about everything that we teach here at Ivy Hop Academy um, is that we want to embrace the authentic move of the Holy Spirit. I've been around the supernatural for a long time now, and I have seen some really kooky, crazy, weird stuff. Uh, and then I've seen the other side of a fence where no one believes that anything happens supernaturally through God. And so what we're really going for is right in the sweet spot of just the authentic move of what the Holy Spirit is doing at the exact time. And so I hope that in this class, uh, I'm able to really deliver that type of message and that type of point of view to you as the listeners. Uh, so we're going to be giving solid biblical revelation. I'm going to be saying a lot of Bible verses because I really believe in backing up uh, what we're saying and teaching with the Word of God. Tons of practical active application. Be laying out a lot of facts. Um, like I said before, concise yet detailed. I'm not going to go rambling on and on, but 
I do want to go a little bit beyond just the foundation and get into some of the more detailed uh, approaches and things that we need to consider when we're talking about utilizing power evangelism. Uh, and finally, this master class is going to be a launching pad for operating in greater power in the Holy Spirit. That's one of the sole reasons uh, while we're doing this, why we started Ivy Hop Academy is we want people uh, to be able to practically learn this stuff and be able to use it in their everyday life. So this is meant to be a launching pad for you. All right, well, this is not, this is not going to be a boring pie in the sky lecture. I really don't believe in, in thinking just conceptually about things. I really believe in practical application and giving you an opportunity and a way to really utilize uh, the information that you're learning. Um, this is not going to be a shortcut to moving in the supernatural. Uh, unfortunately, there really are no shortcuts when it comes to that. Uh, it's really just about pressing into the face of God, really changing your mindset, and, and just taking a lot of risks uh, and watching God show up in really cool ways. Uh, I'm not going to be giving you a list of rules to follow. Uh, there will be some principles and some guides to, to, to consider, but this isn't going to be, you know, you do A, B, and C, and you're going to get X, Y, and Z. I've really found that God doesn't often move in formulas like that, uh, so that's not what this is going to offer. Um, no fluff and filler. I'm not going to go rambling on. I want to get to the point. Uh, I'm going to share my story here real quickly, and then we're going to jump right into uh, the teaching, and I think you're going to get a lot of value. Uh, out of it. And then it's not judgment focused. So, hey, if you're not operating in the supernatural gifts of the spirit right now, uh, then do not feel shamed or anything. This is going to be uh, really an encouragement for you and hopefully a valuable resource on your journey uh, to utilizing this power that God's given us. So no shame, no judgment. Uh, we're just going to encourage and really promote you as a listener uh, to be able to walk in the fullness of what God has made available to us as Christians. So naturally supernatural, I'm going to just quickly talk about this. This is a full premium course that my wife and I uh, have teach, and it basically covers all the foundational and biblical uh, parts of living a supernatural lifestyle. Um, so I will talk about this more at the end of our master class, but I just wanted to say, hey, stay tuned. You're going to want to look at it. Uh, there is a really awesome offer that we're that we're doing for you who are on this masterclass. Uh, so make sure to stay tuned till the end to see more about Naturally Supernatural. All right, so now a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Tyler Cook. I am the executive director here at the Illinois Valley House of Prayer. I'm the lead instructor of IV Hop Academy. Um, I attended the Global School of Supernatural Ministry back in, I believe it was 2010, 2011. Uh, and so we'll get into that a little bit more when I talk about my story, but that was really influential in me learning and growing a lot in uh, the supernatural ministry of the Holy Spirit. Uh, author and instructor of Naturally Supernatural Biblical Foundations for a Supernatural Lifestyle, which we just talked about. Uh, that's got a published course book with it, a DVD package. There's a whole online version. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about that, like I said, later on after the uh, master class. And then finally, I have authored Humility, The Road Less Traveled, and Focusing Your Life to Impact Eternity. And one of my favorites, Cultivating a Consistent Devotional Life. I really believe that spending time with the Lord is one of the uh, primary ways that we uh, will grow in the supernatural and grow in understanding who God is and who we are in Him. All right, so my story with the supernatural. This is uh, something that took place, like I said, back in about 2010, 2011, when I really began to get serious about this. Uh, but I had actually uh, had my ticket to ministry success arrive on my doorstep. After a long and suspenseful waiting period, I held in my hand the acceptance letter into one of the most prestigious and well-respected Bible colleges in all of America. But there was a problem. The problem was I was actually right in the middle of a faith crisis at that time. I was wondering, does God even exist? Was I going to give the next four years of my life to something that I'm not even sure was actually real? And so what ended up happening is I knew that I needed more than just Bible knowledge. Now, I believe in Bible knowledge, and I believe in four-year seminaries and, and, and Bible colleges. Those are awesome. I love that. But for me, at that stage of my life, I didn't need more Bible knowledge. What I needed was to feel God's transformative presence 
and see his omnipotent power in action. I needed to experience my creator. I needed to actually come into contact with God, not just learn more about him. And so that was the turning point for me. Uh, this is when I began to attend Global School of Supernatural Ministry and really began to uh, experience the presence of God in a real tangible and powerful, powerful way. And also uh, just surrounded by a culture where signs and wonders and miracles were expected, where it wasn't out of the ordinary. Uh, all of this was just really dramatic in my own journey with the Lord and in really finally coming to that conclusion that, yes, God exists and I'm going to give my life to him. All right, so now enough about me. Let's dive right into the teaching, traditional evangelism, uh, benefits, shortcomings, and dangers. So first off, what is traditional evangelism? Uh, when I speak of traditional evangelism, I am speaking of the main ways that the evangelical church has gone about reaching the lost. There are a few manifestations of it that I want to explore, including both the positive and the negative influence it has had on reaching people who do not know Jesus. So there's two primary types of traditional evangelism that I have come to find. Uh, one is outreach evangelism, and that includes any activity where believers are going outside the four walls of the church to engage with people in their normal daily activities. And then there's invitation evangelism, and this includes our efforts to invite people to a particular church or evangel evangelistic functions uh, in an effort to expose them to the message of the gospel. Now, I'm going to start out here talking about the benefits, dangers, and shortcomings of outreach evangelism, um, starting out with the benefits. When we move outside of our comfortable Christian circles and engage with others in their own environment, we participate in active love for people who do not know God. This is going to result in a release from our spirit of ambivalence that tends to affect uh, so many of us, especially in the Western church. So as we cultivate intimacy with Jesus, Jesus, our passion for those who do not yet know the Lord and their eternal destiny, that grows and that drives us to go on out and to really seek them in their community. So that's the great benefit of outreach evangelism, but there are some dangers. So in both of these areas of traditional evangelism, there is a temptation to dilute the truth of the gospel in order to be hospitable to the unbeliever. So if our focus becomes mainly about easing people into a relationship with God, we need to really be careful that we are not preaching a gospel contrary to what is in the Bible. We are called to be all things to all men. I really believe that. But this must never compromise the ultimate truth that God has revealed in his word. Let's turn our attention to invitation uh, evangelism, the benefits, dangers, and shortcomings of this method. So dilution of the gospel can be seen in our invitation efforts when we downplay the truth of scripture. We just talked about this by trying to appeal to the unbelieving attender. So this is um, a crisis that I've seen in a lot of different areas where we're trying to be so visitor friendly that we're actually not even really talking about the gospel anymore. It becomes more of like a church service that's based on self-help techniques. And so that's just such a dangerous place to get in because it's not self-help that is going to transform our lives. It's the gospel of Christ that's going to transform our lives. And if somebody's going to be offended by the gospel of Christ, we must stick with what the gospel says. We don't want to intentionally offend people, but at the same time, we don't want to ever uh, dilute the truth of scripture because we're trying to reach someone else. All right, I'm going to move on to element two. We're going to talk about reaching the lost, uh, the model of Jesus and the apostles. Now, this is personal to me. Uh, a while back, I found uh, God drawing me to read through the gospel with what I would say, uh, call a new set of eyes. I felt that he wanted me to see and understand the accounts and statements of Jesus in a much more literal sense. You know, sometimes you can just go through the Bible and just uh, kind of almost glimpse past the fact that this actually happened. Like these are real stories of real people um, that, that, that really happened in history. And so I just felt him drawing me to have that be much more of a literal sense of it. So he wanted me to truly take him at his word and believe what had been written. Now this may sound like common sense to some, but for me, it was revolutionary. 
So I realized that so often I projected my own limited understanding and perspectives into the promises found in the word of God. And by doing this, I actually robbed myself of the power relating to these truths. And so as I began to take a closer look, look at the gospel, something really began to stick out to me. I noticed that most of the time when Jesus taught or preached, he would actually accompany those words with the supernatural demonstration of power. Now, this is really important to understand, okay, because Jesus, he had the most gifted and the best teaching ministry out of anyone in human history. He was God. He knew what he was talking about, but yet he did not rely solely on just that teaching ministry. He demonstrated the power of God, and that is one of the primary ways that he reached people. He coupled that, that spiritual teaching, that biblical truth with supernatural power to really get people to follow him. Um, a great example of this is Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. So Jesus was going throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. And here it comes, healing every kind of disease and every kind of sickness among the people. So we see that that proclamation of the gospel paired right next to it with the, the healing of the sick and with demonstrating the power of God and actually changing the lives of people. Another thing that I really began to notice was that Jesus was motivated by compassion. So when he was acting supernaturally, when he was utilizing the supernatural power of the spirit to heal people or to prophesy or anything like that, a lot of the times it, it starts out talking about how he was moved with compassion. We see that here in Matthew chapter nine, uh, verse 35 and 36, Jesus went throughout all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And so we see Jesus constantly being motivated by compassion. He was stirred on the inside, and what that released was actually this deep desire uh, to heal and to, to move in a way that was going to radically affect people's life. Christ moved in the supernatural as he was filled with compassion. Uh, performing signs and wonders were not just a firework show for him. We move in the supernatural because we are filled with love and compassion for those who are hurting. If we have the power in us to heal someone who is sick, the greatest act of compassion that we can have for that person is to heal them, to access that power and to bring them healing. Um, oftentimes I think that we just wanna comfort people who are experiencing affliction instead of using our God-given ability to actually cure the very condition that they are suffering from. And that is what Jesus did. He met them where they were at and brought about uh, a cure, a healing to their affliction. All right, this is something that I like to uh, continue to pound into the ground, uh, but the supernatural ministry of God, this is not optional Christianity. Some people think that there's those a few men and women throughout history who God uses in these spectacular ways. And yes, I believe there's different levels of anointings and giftings, but I also believe that the supernatural is for each and every one of us. So not only did Christ operate in teachings accompanied by power, but he commanded his followers to do the same. This is God's design and model for us to follow. We will be most successful in our evangelistic efforts when we learn to couple the supernatural power of God with the preaching of truth. Matthew 10, verse seven and eight says, as you go, proclaim this message, the kingdom of heaven has come near, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely give. And so we see right here that we're not only proclaiming the message, but we are also demonstrating the message. And that is the way that Jesus reached unbelievers in his day. And I believe that is the way that he is calling us to do it today as well. All right, so let's move on to why people should believe in Jesus. You know, if we're coming at them and we're trying to evangelize to them and we're trying to uh, draw them into a relationship with God, what is the reason for that? And I think that the best way that we can uh, see how 
God kind of made his case, Jesus made his case uh, on earth, is really one of the same ways that we should be making our case nowadays. John chapter 14, verse 10 and 11 says, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Here's the key part. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. You know, talk sometimes is cheap. And now I do believe that the Holy Spirit comes upon our words and uses them uh, in super powerful ways. But I also believe uh, that the demonstration of that power is a crucial element to bringing people into a saving relationship with Christ. And we see Jesus doing that right here. We see him saying, hey, you know what? You should be believing just by the words. But if you're not going to believe that, then, then look at the work itself. Look at what's happening. How can you deny that I am actually from the Father after you see these type of works? Our next element here, fullness of the gospel, operating in signs and wonders. Uh, now, like I said, I can only do a brief crash course in this. Uh, we will be talking uh, about that advanced training, Naturally Supernatural, that will dive into really full detail and really, really solid teaching on how to operate in the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But for now, let's just kind of do a basic overview. And we want to start out with what Paul, the apostle, what his description of this fullness of the gospel was. And so in Romans chapter 15, verse 18 and 19, we see, for I will not presume to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, resulting in the obedience of the Gentiles by word and deed. Here it comes, in the power of signs and wonders, in the power of the Spirit, so that from Jerusalem and round about as far as Illyricum, I have fully, I always stumble on that word, <laughs> Illyricum, there we go. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. How was he fully preaching the gospel of Christ? Was he just talking about Jesus? No, he was fully preaching the gospel of Christ when he was proclaiming the message and when signs and wonders and the full power of the Spirit were backing up what he believed. And so this is something for us just to keep in mind that really we are not preaching the full gospel if there's not those demonstrations of signs and wonders to go along with the preaching and the teaching that we do. And so uh, to kind of finish off this section here, I want to talk about uh, one of the main ways that, that we are going to see transformation in the lives of people, and that is by overcoming impossibilities. Um, you know, there have been many leaders throughout uh, the history of the world who have give, given cunning presentations relating to their own particular religion. There have also been many unbelievers who have shown great charity and have taken action to meet the needs of society. What there has not been much of is the working of supernatural power. Supernatural power, this is a differentiating factor for us as Christians. This does not neglect the fact that, that non-believers can operate in supernatural powers of darkness. We're going to get into the false supernatural and that that is something that is real and that, that we need to be able to combat against. Uh, but for the man or woman consecrated to God, our supernatural power always supersedes any work of darkness. And so it is our responsibility to walk in supernatural power that overcomes seemingly impossible circumstances in order to deliver the gospel to unbelievers. The life of Christ and his disciples are just filled with stories that display the power of God overcoming natural limitations. And this is something that we need to be focused on. These demonstrations of power are the most dynamic way to present the gospel. But like I said, unfortunately, they've been given the least emphasis in church history. So, Supernatural gifts, there are so many ways that we can demonstrate the power of God, but I'm just listing six right here. Uh, we get into the specifics of how uh, to operate in each of these in the Naturally Supernatural course, uh, but there's words of knowledge, there's prophecy, 
words of wisdom, divine physical healing, the gift of impartation, signs and wonders. I, if I had the time, I could give you detailed instructions on each of these and examples and all of that. Um, unfortunately, with this class, we do not have that amount of time. And so I'm going to actually uh, just move past that now into talking about uh, something that's really, really important to me and heavy on my heart, and that is reaching a new generation and our need for this hour in human history. We are facing um, a, a scary, scary truth that we're about to be in a non-Christian majority for the first time in the United States. American Christianity has reached the generation in which it is no longer the majority. In America, at least two thirds of Generation X, that's 67%, uh, baby boomers, 76%, and the silent generation, 84%, say they're Christians, according to the new analysis from Pew Research. But among millennials, slightly less than half, 49% actually identify as Christians. And a similar number say they're definitely not Christian. Um, when I was looking up some, some facts on church and people who attend church, um, some of the, the statistics were a bit staggering for me. Uh, today, as many millennials say they never attend a, a religious service, 22%, as say they do attend weekly or more. And so if we are using church and inviting people to a church service as our primary means of evangelism, we're doing a bad job at really reaching those who do not know the Lord, because we see that here, the exact same amount of people who attend on a weekly basis uh, coincides with those who never attend any form of religious service. And we have an all-time high of 35% Americans age 18 to 34 who never attend religious services. Are you catching the theme? Uh, the theme here is if we are relying on people coming to church as our primary way of reaching the lost, then we're either failing miserably and need to find a different approach or uh, those 35% are just those who are going to come and we're okay with that. I personally am not. And so when we're talking about power evangelism, the whole reason I'm sharing uh, this teaching in this master class is to say, hey, we're not getting it right right now. I believe in church. I believe in church services. I believe that you can grow and prosper there. But I don't believe that that should be our primary way for reaching the lost. We're supposed to go out to all the nations and preach the gospel of Christ. And like Paul said, that's not just talking. That's doing the work of the gospel also. So in Mark 22, or I'm sorry, Mark chapter 2, verse 22, it says, and no one puts new wine into old wineskins, for the wine would burst the wineskins, and the wine and the skin would both be lost. New wine, it calls for new wineskins. Now, I know at the time, uh, this, this has a bit of a different emphasis uh, from what Jesus was, was saying, but I want you just to kind of take this parable, take this concept, and think about it with this generation. I feel like we have this old wineskin, and the new wine, the, this generation, is being poured into the old wineskin, our old way of doing things, and it's bursting the wineskin. It's not working. And so we need to come up with a way where we're actually going to be able to reach this generation successfully, not using the old tactics that are continuing to fail over and over again, but really, really reaching them. One of the things that has become really popular nowadays is this concept of relative truth. So truth is not confined to a certain belief system, uh, but is different for each person based on what they believe. This is the myth. This is uh, the thought that's going on in society. And this is really the logic that is used behind um, the, the thought of all religions lead to God. Um, you know, there's, there's some who are trying to embrace uh, kind of the molding and the melding of all the world religions. But we got to remember, what does the Bible say? John chapter 14, verse 5 and 6, um, Thomas, he said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. And here's the key part. No one comes to the Father but through me. And so we're coming up against this culture of relative truth with combating it with the truth that, hey, I, I hear you, but really, God in Jesus is the only way that you're going to find salvation, that you're going to find 
peace that you're going to find eternal joy and fulfillment. And so we need to differentiate ourselves from these other worlds, world religions. Uh, it is God's demonstration of power through us that precedes or proceeds the preaching of the gospel that greatly differentiates Christianity from all other religions. Our message is backed up and proven by our lifestyle of supernatural obedience and power. So all of this has just been bringing us back to our roots. Uh, you know, this is the way that Jesus and his disciples modeled how to reach an unbelieving generation. So we need to get back to how they did it in the Bible, how Christ ministered to people. He not only comforted them, he not only shared great wisdom and teaching about the kingdom of God, but he demonstrated its power. He really showed them God. He didn't just talk about him. He showed them the power of God. And if you read through the Gospels, you're just going to be amazed at how many times uh, that happened and the great effect that it had on the crowds and, and the, really the great impact that it had on people really believing in Jesus and choosing to follow him. And so now I'm going to get into, like I said, our full premium course for those who uh, want to go a step further and go a step deeper. Um, this is something that I really want you to consider. So getting back to our roots was one of the main motivations that my wife and I decided to develop a uh, naturally supernatural biblical foundations for a supernatural lifestyle. You see, we believe that the supernatural is not supposed to be a one-off experience, but something that becomes ingrained in our own culture. Miracles should be expected. We should not be surprised when someone gets healed. And so this course is for anyone who wants to gain confidence to move in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, who wants to learn how to identify the authentic move of God, who wants to gain an in-depth understanding of each of the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you want to cultivate a solid theological understanding to living a naturally supernatural life and not only learn cognitively, but actually experience practically the supernatural, this program is for you. Now, I like to say this to everyone. If it's right for you, then I want you to get it. But if it's not right for you, I don't want you to get it. This has got to be something that you feel the Lord is calling and leading you into. I'm not going to try to be salesy and gimmicky here. You know, in fact, I really believe in presenting what we have with no hype and no fanfare and just getting into the nuts and bolts of, of really what this course provides and how I think it could be of really great value to you. So Naturally Supernatural, this course was designed to equip believers with a foundational understanding of how to operate in the supernatural power of God in their daily lives, not just in church, not just when they're around other believers, but in their daily lives. Through biblical teaching and practical application, our aim through this course is to train members of the body of Christ to live and minister like Jesus. Like I said, getting back to our roots. Uh, so here's just a quick overview of what the course covers. Uh, we teach you how to discern the authentic move of the Holy Spirit. Like I said, there's been a lot of kooky and crazy uh, things that have been done in the name of God. We want to just stay far away from that. We want to stay far away from, from the cessationist point of view of, of not believing that anything supernatural can happen nowadays but we also want to stay away from this exaggerated and contrived view uh, that everything supernatural is of the Holy Spirit. We want to know what the authentic move actually is. Uh, in the course, we teach you how to operate in the gifts of divine healing, impartation, prophecy, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, etc. Um, my wife actually leads activations that are just real exercises at the end of each and every module that'll take you through how to operate in each of these gifts of the spirit. One of the most important things about the course is actually transforming your thinking to align with the superior reality of heaven, getting our mind uh, conformed to the mind of Christ and not looking at our natural world and our natural resources fully, but, but really touching base and tapping into the supernatural power that God has made available to us. 
Uh, but we cover how to confidently pray and prophesy over other people who are both inside and outside the church. You know, one of the things that I struggle with most is the confidence to actually go up to someone and say, hey, I felt like the Lord has said this about you, or, oh, hey, I see that you're on crutches. I was wondering, could I pray for your leg? We will lead you how to be confident, have confidence when you approach people so that you can actually uh, muster up the courage to do that. Ministering like Jesus, we want to teach you how to combine the Word of God with the supernatural display of His power to reach the lost. Basically, what I've just got through teaching you in this master class, we go into even more detail with that um, in the course. How to practically grow in your ability to hear God's voice, that is obviously critical to moving in the supernatural. We want to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, what the Holy Spirit is doing, and then we want to just be like a, a sail and just catch the wind of the Spirit and move in however He is operating. And then one of the things that I love about this course is we actually dive into some identity stuff too and, and really touching on who you are in Christ. And from that identity, really that's the place where you're going to begin to really operate in power is knowing who you are and whose you are. And from that point, you'll notice that that the operating in the gifts of the Spirit is just so much more of a natural part of what you'll do. Now, we have had the pleasure of having some really, really great endorsements. One of them um, is by the director of the International House of Prayer, Mike Bickle. Um, he said about the course, in this course, Tyler and Sarah present foundational principles and practical strategies for operating in the authentic ministry of the Holy Spirit. I recommend it to anyone desiring to see more of God's power displayed in their everyday life. They are the real deal. And that just means a ton to me. Mike has been a, a hero of the faith for me. And so for him to give us that type of endorsement for this course, uh, which is really, really special. Uh, we also have Cornelius King, who's the lead pastor of Mighty Word Church. Uh, he said, the supernatural life is not some private exclusive club reserved only for the elite believer. Tyler and Sarah do an amazing job at showing that it is instead an all access opportunity for those that believe to receive the fullness of the impartation of the Holy Spirit. If you want to learn how to walk out your relationship with Christ through the power of the Spirit, then this course is for you. And, and now another one, Darren Hibbs, he's the host of the 10 week Bible podcast, and he's the author of Spiritual Gifts, Are They Still for, the, for Today? This is what he had to say about the course. When I first came to believe that God still spoke and acted today as he did in the Bible, I knew it would be crazy to believe it and not do everything in my power to act on it. What you hold in your hands is an amazingly practical tool to do just that. Put the activity of the Holy Spirit into action in your life. All right, so those are some awesome endorsements that we've gotten some from some, some people who really believe in this program. Uh, now, I just want to briefly walk you through what you'll actually be doing, break down these eight modules. And so we're going everywhere from module one, where we talk about the authentic move of the Holy Spirit and why operating the supernatural is our mandate, our inheritance, and our destiny. In module two, we talk about the source of supernatural living, how to unlock supernatural power through intimacy with God. Module three, we're talking about living in a superior reality. Uh, when we're talking about this, we're talking about bringing the reality of heaven into our earthly circumstances, operating as ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Really great stuff in that one. Um, we have the goal of supernatural living for module four. Uh, we're talking about being conformed to the image of Christ and igniting renewal, revival, and spiritual awakening. Module five, we touch base on power evangelism. Um, this has obviously been, been the focus of this masterclass, but we go into even greater detail in the course about reaching the lost like Jesus and his disciples and, and still that focus of winning the younger generation to Christ. Module six, we talk about the cost of supernatural living. Unfortunately, there is a cost, a great one, but it actually is to your benefit. And so we touch, touch, touch base more about that, uh, about developing courage to take God-inspired risks responding to criticism and mistreatment. In module seven, practical lessons for living natural, naturally supernatural. Uh, we talk about studying, memorizing, praying, meditating on the word of God, uh, pursuing a life of holiness. And we really break down a lot of the practical aspects of living a naturally supernatural life. 
And then finally, in module A, we talk about the reward of supernatural living, uh, persevering in the su supernatural and living a life free from regret where we know that we have really given our all to the Lord.